Since launching Beatonproof's innovative spray-on systems and other various waterproofing solutions, services and consultations, Beatonproof SA has fast become a favorite amongst architects, construction companies and homeowners and are known for their exceptional quality. With thousands of square meters under the belt, you can be assured that Beatonproof SA is 100% at your service. 100% waterproof. If you didn't get a chance to watch the DVD of the office, this basically is a three and a half minute uh, profile about the company, what we do, what materials, what applications. Uh, so if you have need to show your client, you can show your client. Um, and then we'll go from the first page. Uh, if we go on to the first page, we're going to start with Rapid Flex. I'll tell you a little bit about our company on the materials that we've got. We have got a range of about 18 different products, all running from foundation through your side walls, uh, bathrooms, showers, patios, and then rooftops. Uh, any type of rooftop, we have got a material to seal it, uh, up to a 10 year guarantee. The only one that we do not guarantee is a thatch roof. That's the only roof I can't do, but pretty much any other roof I've got material to seal. If we start with a Rapid Flex on the first page, Rapid Flex is used If that is your house, you have then got foundation, ground level that runs. You've got foundation that runs over here. Normally what they do on foundation is they would use the torch on, which is your 10 square meters. Every 10 square meters they would torch it on, they would overlap, they would put another 10 square meters of torch on. The problem with torch on is it is heat fused and you have a joining, you have a seam every nine and a half square meters. So once you have put it down and there's any movements on your foundation, those heat joins of those, that separates. We call it delamination of the torch on. So essentially our material is a seamless application from one side to the other side. If you are on a new development and you haven't gone up with the house yet and you've got the foundation, you would then open up the foundation. If it's not open, you would then open it up by a minimum one meter. When you get to the bottom of the foundation, normally the foundation would stop there. What we do on a old house, say it's 30 years old, 40 years old, we would then go from ground level there open up one meter and then put our waterproofing essentially down here. What we do on foundation is we extend the foundation. So if the foundation is there, we would then put three bricks. We call that an L-shaped foundation. So at the bottom of the foundation, you would then extend it by three bricks. You would then put our waterproofing running there, running up to ground level. The other waterproofing that we use is a cementitious latex. Uh, cementitious latex is a bag of powder, 20 kilogram powder, 10 liter latex. You mix those together, you then get a slush, like a slurry, but it is a flexible plaster, essentially. So that will stop any hairline cracks that you're getting in your plaster, uh, such stuff. We also have additives that we put to plaster with crystals in. All dependent if this part of the wall, say you've got a lot of water coming up from your foundation over here and it's damaging the wall over here. What we would do is from there, one meter high, we would then remove the plaster to the brickwork. We would then put new plaster with the crystals in and then we would put our rapid flex, which is on the first page. You can see the L shape over there. That's essentially what we do with that material. It is a spray-on application. 
If the foundation is exposed and open all the way around, we have the ability of spraying up to a thousand square meters in a day with that material. That material can only be sprayed. So if you do not have a machine, then you would either buy the material from us, we would then come out and we would spray it for you and we would just charge you the rental on the machine. Or if it's a big enough application for yourselves, then you would buy a machine and we would train you through our trainer. That's why we get you there with the machines. They would then give you machine training. The product, the material is the material. As long as you know how to use the machine, you can pretty much suck up any material through the machines that the guys have developed for us. Why you cannot go to Builders Warehouse or Ardendorf's and just go and buy a compressor uh, and try and spray our material is our material is very thick. The viscosity is it's like uh, compared to water and honey. If you look at water, water you'd be able to spray with anything honey, you need a specific machine. The material is very thick so the machine will then take the material, put it in a hydraulic pump and then spray it out hydraulically uh, atomizing the material where conventionally with a compressor you would use compressed air to push the material with compression through and pressurize it out so what the atomization does is it breaks it down by about a thousand percent more than what normal pressure a normal spray gun would do so when we spray the material out it is gravity fed it is not used on pressure air pressure that is used on the pressure of the material that is then pushed out. So if you are getting then on the rapid flex, that's normally what you would do is then you would put the waterproof in there, you would then backfill, you can either put your geotextile fabric down and then you can fill with the soil. If you put the crystals in, which is one of the ag mixes, if you put the crystals in the plaster that you do there, those crystals have the ability to migrate into the foundation. If you have water trapped in this wall, the crystals have the ability to take that moisture out of the wall. They are not dormant crystals, they work with moisture. So if you have plaster damage, you repair the plaster, you put the crystals on, those crystals will migrate into your foundation, into your brick walls, anywhere where there's moisture, it will attack the moisture, turn the moisture into more crystals. So it is a chemical reaction that keeps on happening until there is total, all the moisture is eradicated from the crystals. The crystals will not uh, damage the integrity or the structure of your plaster or your brickwork. All it does is takes the moisture out. So a lot of people, what they do on foundation, they don't even take the soil away. They go to Builders Warehouse, they get their box of polyfiller, they get a guy there with a scraper, he scrapes down the cracks, he fills it, he puts polyfiller, you paint it, it looks beautiful for the first three months. After the first three months that water, that moisture starts coming out, it will then delaminate the polyfiller from the plaster. So that's a patch and repair solution. We do not do patch and repair. That's why how we quote with our material is to do it properly. If it wasn't done properly in the first time, your chance now as our approved applicators is to go in and fix it properly. We will, we, our material is not designed for patch and repair. It's to do the proper job. So that would be foundations. The same material you'll see in your, in your manuals, you've got Rapid flex, you've got rapid flex of T, you've got elasto pads. Now these are, these three over here, these are all a black material. It's a black stretchable material. If the material is black, it needs to be underground so it needs to be covered it cannot go into the sunlight if it is exposed to sunlight to uv it becomes very soft like a chappy so it gets softer 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 until you can take your finger put your finger on there pull it off and your finger will be covered with material so it needs to be buried underground or under tiles 
The elasto pads you can put down with a roller. Uh, you can put the uh, down with a roller, a brush, or spray. The difference on the elasto pads and the rapid flex is that the elasto pads, if you guys open up a foundation and you've only got ten right level, normally when they cast the screed in that, they don't cast the top slab with the screed with a level. It is it, it's self-leveling. So when they put it on for 300 squares and they pour it wet and it sets, it is now should be dead straight. You then need to create a slope design to make sure that when the water's there, it's gone. You can't put it on the flat surface. So those are all things you need to cost for. You need to show your clients and tell your client, look, you need to screen that. You can screen, they can screen. What we try and do is waterproofing. Stay away from electric, stay away from plumbing, stay away from all of the other stuff that's not waterproofing. If you can specialize in waterproofing, you can go in, you can do your waterproofing and you can be gone. If you look at the time that it would take 350 squares, uh, call it five days. Call it five days. To do 350 squares, you're going to be in and out in a week. But if he wants you to do plumbing, there's an extra day on site. If he wants you to do a little bit of electrics, I don't, I don't get involved in it. I can't even build a wall. I've been doing waterproofing for 12 years. I cannot even build a wall myself. Because I don't care. I'll get somebody to build a wall. I don't specialize in building walls. I specialize in waterproofing. So if you try and keep yourself, you, you, you don't, in this industry, you don't want to spread yourself too thin. Spread yourself too thin and take on every job and say, yes, we'll do plumbing. We'll do electrical. Unless you have got a qualified plumber and a division. A qualified electrician and a division. If you make it yourself, you're going to end up running around and not getting any of your stuff done. I have lost thousands, thousands over 12 years of going to clients and, oh, no, can you just fix this door for me? And you end up taking off the door and then you've got to do the door frame and now I'm on site for two days for a bloody door frame. Well, I should have been paid on Friday already and relaxing on the weekend. Now I'm sitting there Saturday and Sunday because I need to get paid for something that I, I, I don't do. So try and stay away from that stuff. If you specialize in waterproofing, make sure that you specialize in it. If you get to a flat roof, but it has got existing torture, which is most probably going to be about 80% of what you guys will encounter. If it has got torture, there's two ways of doing it. You can either take off the torture and then put our material down. If you take off the torture and you put our material down, depending on the size, you get a 10-year guarantee. If you put our material on top of torture, make sure that the torture is not corroded and bubbled and there's water. I've stood on torture before where there must have been about 10 liters of water underneath like a bubble and you stand on it and it just squirts water out on the roof. I've seen that before. Don't think like, oh, well, we'll squirt out the water and then we'll put the waterproofing over. No. In that, in that case, cut the torch on, take the torch on off, let the screed breathe. Let, get that water out. I said earlier on that we've got crystals and such stuff. I've got about 18 different products. I have got crystals that you then can put a slash on that screen. You take the torch on off. It's wet, wet, wet. You then put a concentrate crystals on. Those crystals will migrate into the brickwork straight all the way to the ceiling and get rid of all the moisture. But that is a process that you don't have to put it on and now wait for the crystals to work. Put it on. Put this level to, to, to flow. When you take the torch on off, the easiest way to take it off is with a blowtorch and a flat spade. Not one of those round shovels that you're not going to, you know, you need a flat, flat spade. All you do is you lift, you heat up slightly, don't stand and malt it. Just heat it up and take the spade and it will come off. It will come off. That's the easiest way of taking the torch on off. Make sure that you also, if you're taking off torch on, specify to your client that they need to put a skip there. If you take off 300 square meters of torch on, you know how many bucky loads of rubbish that is? 
If you do not, if you do not quote for it, you don't know where your closest dump is or whatever. You don't want to be driving for an hour, going offload, send the guys back. Let's load the bike again, drive for an hour. It's easier. Uh, tell the kid, uh, tell your client, organize a skip on site. Thanks, thousand rand for the skip. You finish, you chuck, you chuck, you chuck, you chuck, and you go. Get your client to pay that thousand rand. Don't get stuck there for a day, letting your guys work and go back, go back, go back, go back the whole day, where you could have given that to the client for a thousand rand. Don't worry about that thousand rand on rubble. Let the clients, let the client handle it. So those are all things you need to cost and you need to specify. But I would advise take off the torch on. In most applications, I would say 80% of the time, I take the torch on. We had a client yesterday, me and John, uh, we quoted them three weeks ago to do our inner pads. Uh, it's a 12 million rand house. Uh, so we quoted them to put the inner pairs, they said, oh, 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 too expensive, too expensive, 12 million rand hours. They have now done about 200 squares with torch on. Now the owner's like, uh, can you come and put the material down, please? Because he doesn't want the torch on. Now he stopped it halfway. So now we're stuck on, now we have to take that torch on off. But because that torch on has been put on a week ago, we can put our material over because there's no chance of it delaminating or being old and perished or because it's brand new. So in that application, we are not going to take the torch on off. We're going to put the polyurethane over everything and give it 10 year guarantee things. But in the case of, okay, you come to them, now you've got to do this, you've got to do the service to the torch on. You're then going to do the preparation as we've got in the manual, and then you've got to do the waterproofing. So that's three costs, but it's a 10 year guarantee. The problem with Torchon is they give a guarantee, a 10 year guarantee, but in the fine, fine, fine print, if you're lucky, you've got glasses, you'll see the fine print. I normally lose the fine print. It says every two, two, three years, subject to a maintenance service plan. So they'll give you a 10 year guarantee, and in two years' time, you find them and say, I've got to come and do the service, and they're like, what, sorry? <coughs> You're now charging them 75 rand to do a service every two years over a 10 year period. That's an additional 300 rand over a 10 year period on top of the initial cost that they spent for the torture. So now they've just spent 550 rand a square meter on their torture on over a 10 year period, or you could have taken 350 a square and given them a 10 year guarantee with no maintenance. 